How did the whole process start? Did you go to film school? Did you learn how to create content? Go oh, there is many, there is many answers because I've been literally the start of of this whole thing was the solution is easy. <laughs> Just take there's it. a slide and delete. Delete it. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. So what? <laughs> Mumtaz, <laughs> Mumtaz, the good start. So has there been a us we're sitting on a podcast here. This is amazing. We get to Who they were? Maybe Shadan Kone. Exactly the one that I want. <laughs> Let's create some content. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, hello and welcome to the season 2 of our influencer podcast where we speak with one of the finest content creators in the region and we talk about their stories. Joining me is today Life of Mo who goes by his Instagram handle is Life of Mo goes by the name Mohammad Zaki. Welcome on board and uh, I am personally a huge fan of your work so I've been following you for a very very long time and it's such an honor to have you over here. Thank you so much for uh, gracing us with your presence here. Uh, thanks for having me. And thanks for inviting me. It's I'm believing in, in me. <laughs> That's the important part. And we love the content that you create. And uh, you know, whenever I have to look at, uh, you know, you always inspire yourself with a few people. And you've definitely be one of those. Be it your style of creating content, or the quality of the content that you create, or just how you go about doing it as well. It's phenomenal. Uh, try my best, you know. Humble brag, but yeah, you like. I try very... <laughs> well, I, the thing I wake up every day and I say I try my best. That's literally what I say all the time. What you do, yeah. But I try my best. But it really, is an inspiration because you know I've been in events where you know we've been together at the same time, and when I look at my reel that I've created, when I look at yours, I'm like, damn, that's how it should have been done. And it's not like one off, you know. You I get I get these days by the way. I get these days when I'm in the same event with people, and then I'm just like. How did they do that? So yeah, one day, like we say in Arabic, يوم عليك يوم إليك. One day for you, one day for me. One day for me, yeah. yeah. Uh, but very inspirational content, and uh, you know, we want to talk more about who you are as a person, because uh, you know, you do a lot of uh, automotive content, a lot of lifestyle content, a lot of aspirational content, a lot of crazy stuff as well that you know, in the middle that we know. Um, to just get started, to just get comfortable. If you were to take any car. And go on any road trip. Which car would it be, and which location would you go to? What would be like your ideal scenario? Uh, that's a uh, that's like asking a kid, <laughs> you know, what's your favorite candy in the candy shop? Uh, <laughs> you know, as a as a car guy or a petrol head, I have so many favorite cars and so many nice roads to drive on. And uh, alhamdulillah, I've been to many places around the world, so. Uh, there are so many nice things that I would like to choose from. I think I would go with an American car, a pickup, GMC, Chevrolet. I have a soft spot for these cars. Mm -hmm. They're big, bulky, they're powerful, they're comfortable, they have a personality. And then where I would go, uh, there's so many options. There is the US, mm -hmm. the, I, I did the West Coast once upon a time, it was absolutely gorgeous. I did uh, from Moscow till the Arctic Circle. That was by itself a whole different experience that I really I like their uh, environment. Uh, Oman, our neighboring country, is absolutely gorgeous, and it takes a lot of time to to cover everything there. So there's so many options, yeah. Yani. <laughs> Romania, Romania is very beautiful. Trans, Trans Transylvania, the whole area in the middle of Romania, it's green, and then in the autumn it's like. A mixture of green and orange, it's just magical. Mm. Every place around the world has its own magical spot. So if I keep on talking about this, I will not finish. <laughs> which is the car that you took across the, uh, you know, from uh, Arctic that you were talking about? Which car were you driving that time? I had a Range Rover. Mm. Jaguar Land Rover trusted me at that time. And uh, I think it was a leap of faith with them that they gave me a, the, the last edition of Range Rover just before the new one. It was a diesel. And it was, uh, I forgot what edition it was, the black edition, Westminster black edition. So it was mm -hmm. black package and in the interior was in a certain ivory color. It was just pure amazing. That's, that, that's what it was. Beautiful. Do you prefer petrol for like these? Do you prefer petrol cars or do you prefer diesel? I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not exposed a lot to the diesel world. Uh, 
been petrol with petrol all my life. Uh, I don't have a preference to be honest. Diesel is okay, petrol is okay, as long as the car is running and fine. <laughs> Diesel has its taste and its yeah. uh, personality, and petrol has its taste and personality. True, true. Uh, you know, being uh, someone that reviews a lot of cars, uh, being someone that uh, is trusted with automotive manufacturers, you know, you're reviewing cars that are worth millions and you look 700, 800,000 dirham cars. Uh, when you look at reviewing these cars, what is the thought process that goes on into your mind is there's a certain approach that you follow that you know these are the good things that i have to talk about the car these are the things that i don't want to talk about the car uh, do you stay biased or do you just brashly just put out what it is all right here uh, in the region it's very difficult to to talk about what you really feel or know about the car or its downsides it's difficult we all know that uh, however, there are ways to tackle this or there are ways to do your job honestly and nicely without brushing on that political aspect, you know, of not being able to say the bad sides about the car. So you can always talk about, all right, just say about the things that you did like about the car on the video. And then like, for example, when somebody is talking to you on the comment section, you can say, oh, you know what, uh, here on this and that, it might be the car is like that. Um, you can bring it in a diplomatic way. You know, there's like a sandwich method. You say a good thing, then you say like, yeah, and then you say a good thing. Mm -hmm. Usually, manufacturers, they don't mind that. And it's, it depends from one manufacturer to the other. Some manufacturers, they're like, you know what? Say, say what's wrong about the car. And some manufacturers, there is something obviously wrong with the car, but they don't want you to say it. Mm -hmm. Or they, they will not accept you saying it. They don't accept it. Yeah. So, this is one side of the of your question. The other side is, how do I go about it? I... The, the latest way I've been dealing with cars, and I've been in the industry for quite a long time. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the last way, or the la latest way I deal with it is, I genuinely switch off my creativity and switch on my consumer experience. I sit mm -hmm. in the car as if I bought it. Mm -hmm. Okay, how does it feel if I'm going here and there? Oh, what's this situation, that situation, the petrol, blah, blah, blah. then, at one point, there is something in the car that will make my mind click. And this is where I start خلاص, writing my script, what I want to do, etc, 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 like that. And, you know, biggest question with, uh, you know, and I completely agree with you on that point. Um, without taking names, I remember there was a car that I was reviewing, which is basically, a, you'll get it. It's a sports coupe, which is rebadged from another manufacturer, mm -hmm. sold by another manufacturer. <laughs> I just put a story with the key and said, hey, today I'm driving this manufacturer's car, but this thing. And I didn't get any cars after them after that. So I agree when you're saying that, you know, you have to be very careful yeah, yeah. of, you know, where you poke your uh, things as well. So that's... Unfortunately, there is also a very personalized approach to this. Like mm. somebody takes, takes things personally. It takes one person to personally take offense that you will get blocked from a certain list of cars. This is a this is a known thing, and I, I think this is not a يعني, um, what do they call it contradiction? No criticism. Criticism. This yeah. is not a criticism, but this is how things are. We live in a close context culture community. People take things personally from the get go, from our, inside our homes all the way to the jobs. يعني. Uh, so it's خلاص, when when you are presented with this environment, you deal with it. Hmm. If you go to Europe, if you go to the US, it's a different environment. Guess They're what? They're very just open and brash yeah, about everything. Exactly. Yeah. Guess what, what? What do you have to do? Deal with it. خلاص, you have to accept that somebody will come and say, you know what? Yeah, this is your, you know, this is my opinion about your thing, and maybe hmm. it will destroy you. Guess what? It's accepted there. Yeah, exactly. So, خلاص, deal with it. Like, yeah. So what we have to do is we have to deal with it. Really. And I've, lately, I've been trying to be positive about things. Don't want to like. Uh, that's a big change, yeah. You know, I just I don't want to keep on saying, you know, it's unfair. <laughs> Whatever. Life <laughs> is unfair, but yalla, let's let's move on. Let's work with it, yeah. What was the first car that you reviewed and how did that process go Oh, forward? there's many there's many answers because I've been uh, there there were so many steps in my career or in my journey. Uh, there was literally the start of of this whole thing was in 2000 and 11, 2010, I was still in school and I had an idea that I wanted to create an Arabic Top Gear. Mm -hmm. Obviously, later on, I realized that there was already a Top Gear uh, Middle East, Middle East and yeah. uh, all that kind of things. And I had an idea with one of my friends 
to um, do a, a race between a metro and a car, but I wasn't driving the car, so I didn't review the car. Uh, uh, and that project or that st uh, stage of my life, the first car that I actually reviewed or came in front of camera with was a Bentley Flying Spur. What a start. Exactly. What a start, right? Like you think I'd be, <laughs> it was a Bentley Flying Spur W12. Oof. And it was, the reason why I got it is because I merged or I used my pilot and merged with Dubai Media. I used mm. to work there. So I told them I'll create this content which you can put on your platform and they were really happy about it. And I approached Bentley through Dubai Media. That was like immediate. They will not even ask. You take the Bentley. Finish. So I was. I think I'm very lucky that I started with such a car, but it put my expectations so high so that later in my career, when I lost Dubai Media, when I lost this project that I was working on, and they, do, they wouldn't even give me a Mini Cooper. They mm. wouldn't give me a Corolla. Mm. It was difficult. You know, like, I used to drive the Bentleys, but now it's, <laughs> but now it's like, yeah, it's, no. uh, it happens. Interesting. And uh, when you first reviewed, you know, when you first did your actual review car, what you got it right, what was your research? And a lot of questions because your reviews are so thorough, you know. It's not like, hey guys, this is a car, check out this color, this color is so cool. No, you go into the details of every single aspect from the engine to the horsepower to the tech. How do you memorize all of these things? Or is it just like inbuilt? Um, so, I'm really for shorter reviews mm -hmm. yes the i could use the one minute 30 seconds that instagram provides i could use the 10 minutes that tiktok provides i could use the unlimited time that youtube provides but we all know that we are in a day and age where nobody cares mm -hmm. and nobody has time so i want it to be as short as possible what's the challenge what are the pieces of information that you cannot quickly find on google mm. So horsepower, engine, yeah, any, obviously these things, they have to be in the video, although they can quickly be found on Google, but you'd be surprised. Sometimes you, you, don't you wouldn't it. find it or the, the trim is different than another trim in another market. Yes. Uh, and then in, in the reviews that I do, in the past, I think couple of years, I've been doing 90 seconds. This year I'm trying 30 seconds. Mm. I cut it in third. Just like even quicker. Yeah, quicker, so quicker. I need to find the most amazing piece of information about the car. That is not too boring, not too technical, not too petrol head, and not too brochure. Mm. It's a mix of all three of those things. Yeah, so do I memorize them? Well, how do I do this process? From the get-go, from before, it would be either one of the two things. It would be a very accurate script so that I can fit it into 90 seconds, or it would be like five, six points where I could take my flexibility to talk. That mm. way I will not go over 90 seconds, but at the same time, I'm not following a script. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. But like, as I'm shooting, obviously I'll have to revise. It's, you know, you have to be a little bit accurate about like the horsepower or yeah. something. Spaces. Yeah. And there are tricks. Like, okay, if you know, like for example, I had an Audi recently. I know that the Audi is like 600 something horsepower. Mm -hmm. No I'll say around 600, around 600 over yeah. 600 mm. these are quick getaways mm. Mm. nobody's True. gonna tell you no that's wrong okay I said it correct after over 600 mm. at 610 oh, no, no. for example yeah yeah and there'll always be people that will keep poking you like yeah. oh, this is that, this is that. Uh, social media is filled with people who if you go up they'll tell you no go down if you go right they'll tell you go left eh. how do you handle trolls you know people that just like oh my god look no I will not this. lie yeah. I will not lie, I hate seeing them. Mm. Uh, and there's one of two. Either sometimes I would just be like, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. And sometimes I, it will take you back. I'll take it to heart, but I will still not do anything. What, يعني, I don't know how to respond to that honestly. Like, okay, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do? You're gonna reply back? So what? Mm. He's sitting in his living room across the globe, not caring. He, yeah, it's not worth your energy. It's not. Uh, it's it, it, it's a little bit different when uh, you see somebody, يعني, a troll that you know is like from maybe a circle that you know, or maybe from the same country, and his profile is not like private or something. It's public, and he really jabs into mm. something. Then the 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 solution is easy. 
just there's a slide and delete delete it yeah okay well, خلاص as he is free to take a jab at me i'm free to remove what he has True. it's a That's free a world on the social media platform yeah. most of the time it's ignored but if it's something that goes over a red line like you know like maybe family or uh, and you know some some people they 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 cross a limit mm. with Stay trolling yeah. so delete yeah. خلاص yeah and um you know your most viral reels you know you've got few that have done really really well uh was those was those like accidentally that they got those numbers where you posted it and suddenly you're like oh wow or was it like planned structured captured how did unfortunately, that happen unfortunately unfortunately <laughs> none of the reels that have millions are planned they just random yeah. i had a reel that I, was, i was talking about how bentley bentley in their new flying spare they have a pdk double clutch from Porsche mm. and it's eight gears and nowadays GMCs and Fords they have 10 gears Correct. okay at 10 gears when you're driving 140 it's like 900 one, rpms uh, yeah 1500 the flying spare at 160 it was below 2000 for me that was an amazing feat because it's eight gears eight, eight what speed. what's the what's the story behind it the last two gears are they really engineered it to be overdrive overdrive Mm-hmm. I made a re- I'm like, oh, look at this Bentley. It's really nice. It's 160 at uh, 5 million views or whatever. And like literally three quarters of the comments, people are fighting. <laughs> That's why it has all the views. Literally, people are commenting. Yeah, it. literally. You want something to blow up, make it, uh, what's it called? Controversial. Yes. And or even the caption, controversial, controversial. Or say something wrong. People, <laughs> people are, are in for that. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever heard people like, you know, when you go to these events or when you go to these reviews, they're like, Oh, this guy, he doesn't know anything about cars. He just reads the brochures and write it up as well. Because that's a very common thing that happens in the automotive industry. Not in the automotive industry. A lot of... All the industry. All the industry. Everybody's uh, sad with everybody. Everybody's biting at everybody. Mm. It's part of life. I think. Yeah, what is, uh, I think it's just built in. Like, yeah. We have to wake up and uh, nag about somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's been very interesting. We'll do a quick round of myth or reality. Okay. Okay. I'll ask you. I'll I'll make a few statements. You have to tell me whether this is a fact or a myth. Yeah, let us stay. Oh, <laughs> if I don't know, I'll say I don't know. Okay. The most number of people to ever fit in a smart car is nineteen. Probably true. Fact. That's correct. Yeah. Um, you should replace all four tires on your car at the same time. Not only if not one. You should replace all four. Preferred. Yes. Recommended. Correct. Uh, the most popular color choice is white. True. You're just like five on five. You're on fire. Everything no, is kind of true. Because I have a very odd thing in me. I know a lot of uh, general facts. knowledge and facts. <laughs> okay, let's make it a little complicated. Uh, airbags move when they deploy. They come at a speed of 200 miles per hour. Fact or fiction? Uh, true. It should be true because they zero point something seconds and they blow up. Yeah. So it's actually 4,500 miles per hour. Yeah, I don't know the exact Super number, but fast. it's more. Yeah, but yeah. over 200. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> over 200. Um, Volvo is Latin for I roll. Like I roll. It's Latin. I don't know. That's a fact. That's a fact. Um, using premium gasoline, like 98 octane, yeah. always improves the car's performance. True. True. Uh, according to myth, I mean, it's a myth because if the car is rated for 95, you can put a higher octane, but it'll still be the same if it's 95. If it's a 98 octane... It's just cleaner combustion. Cleaner combustion, yeah. Better, better performance as yeah. well. Now is the interesting one, the most controversial one. Would you rather have a manual transmission or a dual clutch? Depends on the situation. Okay. okay. But I think it'll go, I mean, like if you're on a track and you're like really pushing the car or a mountain road, uh, Double clutch would be very fantastic, very fast shifting. But at the same time, the manual has a taste. Mm. If you noticed, most of the podcast, I'm saying everything is like this and like this. I like to see the white, the black, and the gray. True. Manual is very fun. Mm, yeah. I I love. I I came in a manual car. I love manual cars. If I will buy a car, I'll probably buy a manual because you're very engaged. You're in one with the car. No, just very engaged. That would be like uh, making it very emotional and poetic, and it is true. Mm. But it, you're just engaged. You're doing something. I think it's uh, it's nice. Have you ever burnt clutches when no. you're like learning no. to drive or like half a, half? A, <laughs> you know, the thing is because I grew up since I was a kid, I was driving bikes. 
So the clutch concept was easy for me. Right. Okay. Like the moment I got into a car, yeah, okay, I know how to balance it. خلاص. What's the most fun dual clutch that you've driven? Uh, the GT4 RS. It is crazy. The PDQ on that is. Yeah. It is a crazy car. It is th- what I would buy from Porsche if I would buy something. Because like, everybody is like 911 GT3, GT3, uh, whatever, Touring RS. GT4 is the. GT4 RS. Small car, cute, but lethal. Mm, mm. We've seen videos where it goes from like eight to two in like. Yeah. I made I made a full review about it. I made mm. a, a video literally about the the sound of it. The engine is right here, and you can hear it breathe. Yeah, the suctions. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, would you rather have an exotic car or would you have a custom car built? Hmm, tough one. Really depends, but I'm. I see a lot of custom cars that are not nice, so I'm gonna go with exotic cars. Exotics, okay. Yeah. I already know the answer to this. Electric or internal combustion? Internal. But I like electric sometimes. <laughs> the thing is, I've driven so many electric cars and it's like useful and nice at some points. And I like, one thing that really affected me is I took my mother one time in an EQE Mercedes. Mm. It was so quiet that my mom was like, oh, I like the quiet. And for me, that affected me, you know, like, <laughs> Oh, I'm happy that she's happy with the silence. Mm. But probably internal combustion. Probably internal. I want, yeah. I want uh, noise. What's your thought about electric cars having external speakers where the exhaust no. is supposed to no. be? No. Just, Just don't no. do it. Just no. <laughs> Just don't do it. Yeah, no need for that. It's designed to be silent. Khalas. Do it, yeah. Ford Mustang or the Chevrolet Camaro? Neither. Neither? I was a Dodge Charger owner. Mm. And I would rather have the Dodge Charger, but if I only had two options, I'd probably go with the Camaro. With the Camaro, GM mm. boy, you know, I like GM. Products. You like the GMs. Um, German engineering or Italian style? Well, that's a weird question, because like, do I do I choose on the car like either this or Looks that? Or yeah, like would you rather nah, have? I that German engineering. I don't care what the car. Like. <laughs> Good one. Um, Alfa Romeos, for example. They're beautiful, but beautiful yeah, yeah, cars. Okay. <laughs> What's your take on BMW's new design philosophy? It's not for us, but it's nice. We don't very we, diplomatic. We don't see, no, no, we don't see it. The thing is, I believe in this. Like, we don't see it. We don't. Uh, we don't appeal to it because we've seen all what it was before, mm, mm. and it's good for the new generation. Okay, what if BMW is going through the new Chris Bangle era? You know, like mm, in the 2000s, like they had a flop. Like in the 90s, yeah. Whatever, halal, they're going to have this era and then they're going to come back again. True. What's your favorite, favorite uh, small car that you would zip around town? It can't be the Jimmy because I know you're driving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that is out of the option. The Jimmy is perfect because it can go everywhere. What's Apart from that, what is the cool small car that you would rather have? Uh, there's so many like there's this Toyota IO or something, mm, right? Yes, small, yes, yes. The cute. two small one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cute. Uh, Fiat is nice. The 500, yes. A Barth, yes. although the clutch on it is disgusting. Yeah. I don't like it. Mm. Mm-hmm. The, but it is fun. It's a fun car, yeah. Uh, what what else? No, that's it. The A Barth, the Toyota IO. Mm-hmm. The personally, what I would choose to go around town, I don't think I'd pick the Fiat. Yaris GR. But that's big. That's a big. Yeah. I'm okay, looking fine. at Fair small. Enough, yeah, yeah, small car. But yeah. Yaris, yeah. If it was, if you're, uh, if you're saying Yaris, Yaris GR. GR, oh, yeah. Go for it, yeah. Perfect. Uh, a lot of people, you know, when they look at you on Instagram, when they see your conversions, you know, when they see your conversations that you're having with cars as well, they want to, they want to create content like you. Um, you know, how did the whole process start? Did you go to film school? Did you learn how to create content, or how did you get it to the level that it is now? What was your story? Literally, behind? I say one thing. Have in Arabic we say الحاجه ام الاختراع. The need is the mother of invention. When you need something, not want. When you need something, you need to become something. You need to succeed in something. You will invent. You will find ways to learn. Whether it may be self learning, you will go somewhere. You will go to YouTube. And like when I started, Google and YouTube they weren't as amazing as they are now. Mm. Now you have a tutorial for everything all of my journey by the way it is like 95% self-taught yes I took a short course 
in a filmmaking school or whatever it was, was to be honest with you, it was not beneficial. I learned nothing. It, it uh-huh. added nothing. Mm. It's from experience and what you learned that got you more. Experience, practice makes perfect. Mm-hmm. The need is the mother of invention and go. No, I'm going to fail. No, go. No, I'm not going to do it. Go. It's going to look bad. Go do it. Mm. Because if you don't fail, you will not succeed. There's a lot of people now on Instagram, if you open Instagram, all the like uh, uh, the wisdoms or the quotes that people are taking, you know, and they're adding music and whatever, it's like, yeah. fail to succeed. And mm-hmm. that is the reality. It's very scary. I talk to you from a, from a person who's afraid to fail. It's mm-hmm. my worst fear. Mm-hmm. I'm not afraid of the dark or the height. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm afraid of failing. But the more I move in this journey, the more I understand that you have to fail to succeed. True. This is how I reached to where I am. Script writing, the angles, what the audience wants, the balance between giving the audience what they want and having your own creativity, your own unique style. It's a thing that by practicing and by self-learning, you will understand. And most importantly, talk. Talk with people. Surround yourself with people. Mm. New people, old people, whatever it may be. Every day you speak to somebody, you learn something new. This is important. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, it's so good to know, you know, the person that that is behind the whole Instagram thing as well. You really are a very, you know, what do you call it, as a gem of a person and who has started from scratch, started from no one and then learned their way up. It's, it's a journey and, you know, it's a lot of hard work that has gone into it. And like I said, I've been following you from like, you know, when I started my reviewing journey, where I would just shoot on iPhones and I'd always look at your content. I always be inspired. I'm like, how does it do it? How does it do it? How does it do it? And a lot of times, you know, when we see people on Instagram, they're very nice and friendly, but you meet them in person, they're very like, you know. Unfortunately. Yeah, but it's not the case with you. So I'm very glad. Inshallah, I'm always like this. This is my yeah. dream. That's, yeah, I'm very glad to be able to, you know, convey that to you as well. And, you know, absolute pleasure having you over here. So thank Thanks you again. for having me and so for much. taking the time. Thank you for... And for all the nice words you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, guys. That's it.